How are you going today guys? My name is Kilk and today we're joined by Snake Dyers playing Brimstone on Bind. Now this was recorded pre the Brimstone buff, however a lot of the points about utility still apply. Snake Dyers also asked a bunch of great questions that can benefit a lot of people. So without further ado, let's get into it. Well you will eventually, so having those extra bullets definitely helps. So, right here, actually, yeah. maybe even a little bit further back. So, about here, just before you execute, because it's a split, uh, you don't actually mind faking. So, if you like drop two smokes down, your raise is going to go in. Um, and then that might either call rotations off or at least keep people here so they won't rotate onto A. Um, so, just... Don't be afraid to like dump you till. It's kind of tough with Brim because you only get three smokes. But yeah, that's what that, I've that's what I've noticed with Brim. It's like I'm really scared to smoke because I feel like. But what if there's a better opportunity to smoke? I think yeah. that's just how I, how I'm approaching controllers now. It's like I don't want to waste my smokes, but at the same time, if like I find myself just not using them sometimes because I I always think a better opportunity will come up. Yeah. Like I'm supposed to save them for the execute or something. Yeah, and I guess like. If you save them and not use them, that's worse than just throwing them down. Yeah. You know, if you smoke, they will probably come being like, smoked B. And then they have to pay respect to that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. If B is completely smoked and someone's sitting here, he's not just going to leave B to go to A. Unless they see bomb or bomb starts planting or something, then they'll leave. But by that point, you know, you've already done your job because they're getting a plant and then you can just, yeah, you can just like teleport around back to A. Um, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, definitely dump two smokes here, I would say. Um, all right, so you do it now. Oh, so, these are too late, yeah. I would, yeah, so given that he is already an elbow, you don't need to smoke this off anymore. Yeah. Because, yeah, you're not really covering anything. At this point, CT is the only thing to smoke? Yes, that's right. This is a terrible position, I think. Oh yeah, there. I drop off, thank God. Yeah. Right, so you know one's in CT, and I didn't see where that came from. I think it came from Hookah? Okay. Mm, no, that's a weird angle. I don't know if it came from Hookah. That. <laughs> that was sketch. I wouldn't recommend is... pushing into your smoke, because um, if he pushes out, you could be like anywhere here. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, just watching that angle. So... He would be at like a more a bigger disadvantage by pushing your smoke um, than me pushing in because then it's like kind of an even fight since we both are yes. blinded by the smoke. Yeah. Right. Also, right. given that like your server is so low, you know, if he managed to like accidentally headshot you or something, then your server gets in like a really awkward spot by having like such little health. Um, yeah. It's not like he can effectively trade either because he would just have to shoot through smoke. It's too dangerous of a play. You're yeah, right. yeah. Like it worked out, but as far as like percentages <laughs> go, I mean, you could also like just consider just mollying it and then just leaving. Yeah. Because then you're burning so much time off the clock as well. So like this isn't too bad though. Like this is, I suppose, your classic defaulting sort of style. That pick yeah. there is. Rana gets a pick. That's unfortunate. Yeah. Rana has an op. I think I'm too scared to take control of Hookah. Well, nice. that guy just died. That's a good pick. All right, so you know, so at this point, you know, there's two on B. So right. I would definitely try and get to A as fast as you can. Um, especially because he got a pick on A as well. If you can, right. but I mean, you can either do two things. Sell the fake and hope they TP or rotate or you rotate yourself and just go. And then you can like, right. smoke it off. Um, I don't know where Chamber got the pick from. I think he got it. I right, so he got it there. He got it near heaven. Yeah. Yeah. Or drop or whatever. But yeah, so... Well, I go for the better gun. Do yeah, I take that's alright. Oh, I guess Chamber and I are going to try and take B. 
Yeah, so you... It's not the worst, but given that Killjoy's here and Rain is here with an AWP, it's going to be really difficult to get out. Was Killjoy Killjoy's long? Uh, I think Killjoy's elbow, to be honest. Oh, yeah, because I saw Sova die, but I didn't see where he died from, so I was just confused as to yeah, where Yeah, because I think he was... I think Sova was looking at the turret when he died. So the turret pings, and then he dies. So Killjoy's either, like, in there or... Swings off the turret. Yeah. Um, and that's where you could molly Cubby and alt site or something. Because you know, and Rainer doesn't really... Rainer's not like Chamber or Jet where they can like dash or teleport out. So if you alt site and molly Cubby, you'll probably get one at yeah. least. The only possible place it could be is Elbow at that point. Yeah, and then if you smoke Elbow, well then, you know, you've cleared... If you alt and molly and smoke this off... You've cleared the whole site essentially, unless he's playing in like some rat corner. But Sova died there, so you know he's not in this corner. Sounds good. Yeah, that's a better spot for it. Oh, I think he's... Wait, I didn't remember this. He called out to wait until like 30 seconds to smoke, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Where do I play here? In the smoke again, dude. So, it's boss like this, like, it's not as bad. Oh. That's also fine. I think I die here. I think Reyna holds this angle. No. Fuck my yeah. So, what you want to try and do is burn time. So, but I can't... I don't know how... So, if you don't show yourself... I mean, they're, you're going to give away your position eventually because you have to contest it. Um, yeah. But if you just like molly against this wall to try and get it to land sort of around there, that gets them off the bomb. And then, you know, they'll either have to come to you or... Well, they can't let you live, so they'll come to you. And if you can try and isolate the 1v1s... Because um, if you molly there, they'll probably either go this way. Or just hold it. And then you can sort right. of wrap behind tube for a little bit. Because your win condition now, barring some sort of miracle 2v1, is going to be time. Fuck, my bad. But I mean, I think that, oh yeah, they had heaps of time, but yeah, you just want to try and delay it as much as you can. Yeah. Um, alright, so this is where I'm going to say watch your map more than anything. Yeah. So Viper ults, he gets tagged and runs into this corner. So I should have ulted. You've, you've, got your, you've got your ult out as well. I thought you were going to do it, I was like, this is going to be sick. And then you just don't. So the, I, don't, I don't know why I, I don't know why I decided against it, honestly. Yeah, it would have been free because if you just put it on the edge, you know he has to then run out. Um, yeah. Whereas yeah, now he's still got his pit up. Now I just died a neon, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think so. So in the spot like this, if you know he's there, cut him off. Ult it. By a, um, yeah. No, nah, with a molly more so than anything. The ult neon uh, isn't as good because it's not really a delay. She's it's just going to run away. Run away yeah. And then just wait for it. But if you chuck a molly sort of deep so it lands like there, he's stuck back here. And then you've yeah. sort of been able to make all this space. And then if you want, just before the molly ends, you can smoke it off. Um, right. I should have ulted. Oh, I think you said Your molly you does ulted. a lot of damage. Yeah, it does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. So you did know that you should have ulted. Yeah, whenever I play the... Uh... I tend to like just talk to myself and say I should have done this, I should have done that. I try to like analyze what I could have done better after after every death. Yeah, no, that's good. I mean, if you're committed to getting better, then you know that's good. I feel like I can be better. I feel like like at least from all the experience I had in Overwatch and how high I got in that game, like it? this should I I don't expect to hit like radiant or anything, but I think I can at least hit diamond, maybe immortal if I try. Yeah, I mean, like I said, your crosshair positioning is pretty good. Your aim's pretty tidy. It's just the utility usage, I think. Um, and like the game sense to know where they can be and where they can't be. Oh, nice shot. 
Um, I think that's what really elevated my sort of understanding is once I started learning where they can and can't be, then I started doing way better. Oh yeah, uh, during, when I took when I recorded this game, uh, my map was set to just show where I was, but I've since changed it to show the entire map at once so that I never I always have all the information. Yeah. Um yeah. I got to get used to it because it's really difficult cuz now I can't like it's easier to see in when it's like this. Um or it's easier to know like where I'm looking on the map, but and when I get used to it it'll be fine. Yeah, for sure. I um I, I, Do mean, I ult like that. is it even worth ulting a fucking U-Haul here cuz I just saw Reyna run into it. Yeah, it can be. This is too late in ult. She's probably already gone. Yeah, it was. I mean, you got one, so. Wait, I got one. How? Oh. This is. Fuck. This is bad. Yeah, no. She's just gonna peek me. I'm. Yeah, I'm dead. So she wrapped around the entire way, I think. Yeah, I think so. As soon as spot like this. I mean, it's tough with an AWP, but so you got one. He runs. If you don't see him straight away, so here what I would have done is just dump two smokes or, or three smokes just all around it and then just try to stick it. Because he knows exactly where you are and you have to tap the bomb. You have no idea where he is. Like, he could still be in yeah. here for all you know. What do you mean by all three smokes? Like a circle around it or just like all three in the same position? So I just put like a little triangle or something just to make okay. it really hard for him to see you if he needs to push in because you probably spray right. through the bomb. But, you know, if you're sort of in an awkward spot like up here or something, mm -hmm. he might spray closer to the truck because they know the bombs on the truck. So they'll right, pin right. exactly on bomb. If you're like a bit off it, then, you know, he might miss his spray. And then if he has to reload, well, then you've got a free, a, um, a free defuse. Right. As it stood, like, yeah, because he knows exactly where you are, you, you kind of screwed. Yeah, good rotate. I mean, Raze has cleared so much space. We see Reyna, so I rotate back. Raze yeah, I mean, once he flies, it's not so bad to rotate At this back. point, it's, a two, it's two sight just to, oh, well. That's unfortunate though, isn't it? Yeah. So they're probably going to hit B because they got two picks on B. Oh, what the fuck? Neon's there. <laughs> Goes to show what I know. Oh, Spike Harry called, yeah. I mean, Reyna's was last seen B-Long. She could rotate through spawn yeah, sure. if she plays a long game. Oh. Nice. All right, well, this is going to be difficult. <laughs> Wait, she was in the showers. Okay, I heard the call out, I guess. Holy shit. This is not... So he saw you. Fuck. So yeah. if, you, if they call showers, just smoke it shit. and hope. Because, not... you know, you've got bomb control. So if you smoke this off, he has to push you. You know, you could be there. You could be behind triple. You could be hiding here. Or, you know, you could be in the smoke or in this corner or wherever. Um, right. You just want to sort of... Deny information as much as you can, um, knowing that he has to come to you. So, because you've got control of the bomb. And how much time is left? 30 seconds. So, he doesn't really have a whole lot of time to run around. And plus, you'll hear yeah. it if he does. So, it's not like he can shift walk around. Um, so, if you hear him running away after you've smoked it, then you know, you know you're in a pretty good spot. Yeah, um, I should pay attention to the timer more, honestly. Like the even even if like I don't smoke it, like he still has no time to walk around. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And because he's got no time to walk around, you know he's a hundred percent coming showers. Like there's yeah. just no two ways about it. Um, or you know if he for whatever reason does decide to run, well then it's just so easily countable because he doesn't have time to run and then walk back, and then right. Plant. Um. So yeah, just keep an eye on the time, I suppose. And yeah, not being afraid to just you know throw shit down, throw smokes down. 
I just find myself in a lot of situations where it's just like, well, my teammates are doing their own thing, and we don't really have any coordination. We're just kind of playing a glorified deathmatch at that point. Yeah. And I don't know how to, like, what to call or what to do in that situation, how to make the best of it. Yeah, so that's why I asked if you're happy to comp, because what I've found playing controller is that you sort of, like, need to be the driving force of pretty much everything. So, yeah. you know, be like, I'm going to smoke heaven and lamps you guys go in after that or mm. you know i'm gonna alt lamps and smoke off heaven so get ready to go in but i mean that just comes with experience as well just like playing because i mean rank queue is very hit and miss with the people you get so rank queue is a monkey fest dude. <laughs> yeah. it's so bad <laughs> yeah, exactly right um so but yeah so like if you were like if you could after this drone clears off like sort of here and cubby or not cubby whatever this is i forget what it's called right now um yeah you can like sort of push into a forward spot and smoke off even if you want to smoke off this bit because that covers that smokes off all of this anyway um yeah i can't really get peaked from heaven either especially with the brim smokes because they're huge like i think you can do it from here um smoking off truck and in between yeah, I should be able to. That That's about the brim range, I think. Yeah. I think um, I have to get up to that box over there before I can smoke it. But yeah, it should be fine. Yeah, and then just yeah, telling your team to go in afterwards. Or, you know, you could just ult hooker and then they... Not yeah. Hooker, ult um, U-Haul and then they might go in as well. Oh, something else I wanted to mention. I think this is like... I think the map that I've experience this the most on is ascent but there's so many situations where we're gonna try and push a site and then like sage walls or raise tosses an aid or some some form of like stall and my team just sits there and does nothing and i can't blame them because i don't know what to do either i could call for a rotate but some of them just don't listen to that and it's like we don't we maybe don't have like mid control or something it's just like i'm always very confused of what to do when someone stops like a push uh, yeah. I don't know what the what the what the thought process is. I guess. After so I suppose that. if anyone uses any like stall utility, like obviously that's good for you guys, especially if it's early because, oh, pardon me, because they're already burning a lot of their util. So for example, if a sage walls in uh, hookah, you just have to break it though. You cannot leave sage walls unbroken. Yeah, that is one thing that I found in low elos that they'll just see it. And then just leave. It's like an impenetrable wall in low elo. Um, cause I always try to break it if it's like going up. If no one else will shoot it, I will. Yeah, okay. Definitely always shoot it, even if it's there. Because the thing with the sage wall is it not only just stops them, but it's also information. So, for example, if you wall off hookah here and you leave, you always know if someone's coming. Because if your wall is unbroken... It no one can be here you know right. what i mean so hookah's yeah. always open for them uh for the defense um so they don't need to watch it because the wall is still there whereas as soon as you break it even if you leave they now have to be aware okay they can get through um so it's like a bit of i suppose that's where her like sentinel aspect comes from because it's just map information similar to the trip you know if your trip's right. here you know no one has ever wrapped this way right are you sure they can go around this but yeah, to answer your question about the stall, you just, I suppose, just wait for it. Like, you don't have to force a rotate straight away because, you know, there's going to be heaps of stall you till like, raise nades, your mollies. Yeah. But um, then I think, like, okay, they've had enough mollies. time to rotate at this point. What do we do now? But just because they stall you doesn't mean that they will rotate. And I suppose that's where that's defaulting true. comes. Like, for example, you're not really defaulting if, like, three of you go here. And one of you yeah. goes there. So if you have like one person long, two people in hookah, and, you know, one person short and one person showers, you know, then more people have to use their utility. Like, you know, Viper will have to like snake bite there or, you know, for example, if they had a brim, you'd like might smoke off here and molly it or something because they have to respect all the points that you're sort of applying pressure to. Whereas... And if it's four people running into one spot, you know, it's so easy to stall it because, you know, you throw a nade there, someone else can rotate, Viper Molly, um, you know, they can stagger the utility so much easier. Right. 
is just so that I'm like, because I know that a lot of people don't understand the concept of defaulting, or they have like a misconstrued idea of what it might be. Um, so just so I un I can like confirm that I understand the concept of defaulting in this map. Let's take yeah, let's take fucking uh, what is this bind? Yeah, yeah. bind for example. Um, a default is when you have like each player in like a lane, as I've heard them referred to, or at least or maybe one player has to take or maybe two players have to take one lane, whatever. Uh, the point is to not really take any super aggressive positions and just either wait for the enemies to push to you or use that time to like kind of work your way and take more map control. Yeah, so like, it's more of this latter that you just said. So it's more you want to try and force map control. Um, yeah. Yeah, so you don't want to like just boots in and fucking, you know, that's not defaulting, that's just being an idiot. Um, yeah. So, you know, if you're a jet, you know, you might slowly clear off showers show a bit of presence, someone here might, you know, show a bit of presence, this gets smoked, they spray through, so then they have to respect it, maybe throw some util. You're just trying to yeah. create space and burn utility. Um, right. And then, you know, maybe if you get a lucky pick um, or a lot of utility is gone and time's getting low, then you regroup and then you execute a site. So, for example, if he gets like a pick at showers and someone yeah, gets. Yeah, let's a say pick. like Phoenix pushes showers or something and Jet gets the pick, she can now take control of showers, assuming she does. Like, yeah. assuming Phoenix isn't duoed. That's like more map pressure, and I guess she can work with that. Yeah, exactly right. So then it becomes like a 4v5. You've got control of showers. So, you know, you might have two on B and two on A. They have to respect the showers' presence as well as anything that's coming up here. And if you've cut noise, like the people at B can't rotate off yet either because, um, well, they don't know where you are. So if they just right. instantly rotate, and this is where it can get really exploitable. So if you get a pick here and then they instantly rotate, well, then you know B is free and then you can just right. take it. Um, so that's just, I suppose, learning how the other people play because some teams will rotate like instantly. Some of them will anchor forever and that's also exploitable. Um, is it wise to call for defaults in low elo? Because I feel like maybe a lot of people might have a misconstrued idea of what it is. And I just wouldn't like even call it an int. Yeah, I wouldn't even call it defaulting in low elo. I'd just say let's yeah. just try and take map control or right. something like that. Something where they can sort of understand it rather than, yeah, like I, I said, if they have like a the wrong idea of what defaulting is. Yeah, because some people just say, oh, defaulting is just play for picks. And that's not entirely true, but I guess it's kind of the same play style. Like, yeah. everyone kind of looks for something, but it's not entirely the same. Yeah, I, but I mean, playing for picks, you know, we still see people just run in and try and get a pick and then say, yeah, I got my one, where it doesn't really help. Because um, if you can get, like, player advantage, that's when your defaults really worked. Because if it's, like, a 4v5, then... You know, your executes just become that much easier. Yeah. Yeah, so what I was saying with your crosshair placement, depending on like your reaction speed and stuff, they this is like a very tight angle. So if they like wide swing or something, or they oh like yeah, wide out, then wide swing versus um like a like a non wide swing. How do I? Is there like? Is that just come with experience, like knowing when an enemy will tend to wide swing and when they won't, or is that is there like, I don't know, because I find myself always not get like some like I'll I'll hold this angle right and the wide swing and I won't get it, uh, but when I hold the wide swing they won't wide swing and I, I'll just I'll miss, and yeah. it seems like I should I should know when they sh there's like a good chance they'll wide swing and when there's a good chance they won't. So the way I sort of think about it is. If you're in like an off angle, then they're more likely to wide swing. So for example, if you, let's say Raze isn't here um, and you're in hookah, if you're expecting people, if you want to swing for people here, you will, you will sort of swing just here. However, if you're here, that then becomes a wide swing angle because he wants to clear this wall. So he will swing from back here and then he will swing to here to be able to clear down this way if that makes sense right so yeah from there he will swing close to this wall but be able to clear all the way there because you're pushed up him swinging out here now is a wide swing for you right so if you're an off angle it's more likely to be a wide swing if you're on a 
on angle, I suppose you could call it, you'd be yeah. on a tighter swing line. I don't know what you a non wide swing. <laughs> if it's like a two on two, you know, forty seconds left, people probably won't wide swing at all because they'll yeah. slowly clear. They might like slowly like I don't know if you heard it, it's like pizza cutting or whatever it's called. Yeah, slicing the pie, I think is what one video calls it. Yeah, where they just like yeah, slowly clear the angle. So then it's less likely for them to just to go like that. Um so that yeah, so it's it all depends, but like now is like a good idea where they probably would wide swing. So in spots like this, I'd almost just recommend being like, Yeah, look, I'm just gonna alt U haul. We'll just take A. Like that. Oh yeah, that's another thing I wanted to ask. Alt economy in this game. I find myself in one like I always, always, always underuse my ult. Like it's just sitting there, and I never know when to use it because I feel like it's such a big. It takes like seven um, ticks or whatever to get my ult. Um, yeah. And I just I no matter the hero I'm playing, I always think I'm gonna waste it. So I only use it when it's like necessary or like when my teammate calls for it because then the onus is on them to like <laughs> make a bad call so it's not my problem <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah i definitely get trying, out wanna, of that mindset <laughs> yeah i want to use my ult more i want to i want to really like it's a part of my kit that i just underutilize and it, it really it frustrates me to know that yeah okay well i mean just like with brim on attack like it's just so good for clearing space because you know especially on bind which i think is why he's so good on bind because you can alt this whole like if he's there and you alt this whole thing, he has to run this way out. or that yeah. way, and he's just probably gonna die. Same with B, like if you alt sort of this area, you know they have to leave cover, um, yeah, which then puts them in range, uh, puts them in range of like people from hookah and long, and then you just get a free sight, and then after that you just smoke it off and go. Obviously, yeah, you, I think with I think with Brim specifically, I'm too focused on trying to get a kill with my alt. Yeah, it's nah. just not necessary. You, if you get a kill, that's great. But otherwise, you just get map, you just get map control, or right. area control. So, taking A without lamps is really hard. If you've altered it, no one's in lamps. Lamps is free. You right. Know what I mean, and then from there you can just smoke off heaven and CT or something, depending on what else you've got control of. Um, oh my god! Wait, you're so right. I just like it. Just it didn't hit me until you like you verbally said it. Lamps is really strong on this map. Yes. If you just clear it, that's totally free. What? Yeah, oh exactly God. right. That's why like, when I play Astra and we've got like a jet or raise, I'm like, look, I'm just going to put two stars in lamps. I'm going to stun the first one and pull the second one. Just go in. So right. when I stun it, they'll run back, get stuck by the pool, and then either get vulnerable or you know, jet or raise can take the kill. And then we've got lamps right. control. And then essentially after that, you've got A. Because you can do this smoke on the truck and on here and you've got this entire section and then you just pay post plant and then it's easy even better if you've got bath but you know so yeah just use it to take control of areas but yeah like i said i reckon your cross air positioning is pretty tidy definitely keep it a little bit away from angles though um that'll just give you a little bit more time and then yeah, your utility usage just needs a bit of tidy up. Or just more yeah. being proactive with it, I think. And then organizing right. your team to go in after it. Because that's what I found with I'll Astra. definitely try to like I'll definitely try to shot call a little more. I want even if like I don't even if I don't know what I'm doing, it's better to make like a bad play and learn from it than make no play at all and just de deathmatch it out. It's really dumb. Yeah. How absolutely. Low -low works. But it's fine. Like, you're not going to get your calls right every time. No one does. You know, even the pros get yeah. wrong. So, don't just don't be afraid to just try stuff. And then you see what works and what doesn't and, you know, who you like playing with. So, for example, when I play Astra on Bind and then we've got a raise, you know, I'll be like, raise, I'll suck back sight and you throw a nade in it. And, you know, often more yeah. often than not, you get it, get someone, especially if they've got a Cypher because Cypher will just fucking sit here. Yeah. Because he's looking at his camera and stuff or, you know, I'll you know, pull and stun, U-Haul, just go in. And then, you know, if there's some sort of direction, um, people are more likely to do it. As long as you're not being like too ordery with it. Think about it. Yeah, just so, be like, hey, why don't we go Why don't we go be this round? I'll smoke and then we can just try and see where we go from there. Like even a simple call like that is more direction than I've heard in Loila. Yeah, exactly right. Just stuff like that. So, 
Well, I appreciate you going through this VOD with me. I'll definitely be back to like look at more VODs. Um, I yeah, don't know absolutely. how much time you have or if you have like another appointment, but uh, I, I just wanted to say thanks for uh, thanks for taking the time to help me out with this. No, all good. You're my only uh, only session today, so I'm just gonna go. Oh, like sweet. Shots, but um, yeah, definitely. If you want, chuck that Viper one up on VODON, um, and I'll go sure. through that. I'll do it right now, actually. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, in like two or three weeks' time, you know, make another recording, and we can organize another session like this, and then you know, see if you've improved or see what needs working on again. I mean, fuck, you might come back three weeks time and be like, I'm already in plat, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Here's hoping, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll, uh, you too. I'll keep in touch. See you later. All right. Have a nice day. Peace.